poppin' yo, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're taking a look at yet another film review. Today we're taking a look at another film review. And today we're taking a look at Kung Fu Panda 4. Kung Fu Panda 4 is a new movie which came out in 2024. And it has a lot better animation than the first three, which kind of creeped me out. I'm going to be honest, I could see every single individual hair on Poe's body. And I didn't like that. That was very awkward and confusing and... I don't know, it just didn't feel right to see every hair on his body. It was kind of creepy, and I didn't really like it. I'm going to be honest. It wasn't um, something that I was sort of expecting from Kung Fu Panda. However, without any further ado, I wasn't expecting them to make a fourth one. So let's uh, stop wasting time, get into what Google has to say, so then I can quickly run through the story myself, because Google never gets it right, and then I can... Uh, uh, quickly uh, review the review the movie as well and tell you my opinions, thoughts, and uh, stuff on it. So, Kung Fu Panda 4. It is a comedy adventure movie which lasts for an hour and 34 minutes, came out in 2024, has a 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb, a 72% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 54% on Metric. Po must train a new warrior when he's chosen to become the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace. However, when a powerful, shape-shifting sorceress sets her eyes on his staff of wisdom, he suddenly realizes he's going to need some help. Teaming up with a quick-witted corsaurus fox, Poe soon discovers that heroes can be found in all shapes and sizes. So how this story actually starts is Poe is defeating a giant manta ray, he opens up a new noodle shop, and Shifu's like, hey, you know, your time as a dragon warrior, it's up. It's up, buddy. You need to sort of pass on the sort of trophy and give it to the next guy. So he refuses. He goes on one last adventure because this um, dragon warrior thing is his thing. He's scared to give it up. So he decides to uh, train this fox and um, agree to go on a journey with this fox to find the chameleon, a big bad who's stealing sort of kung fu and is shape-shifting into Tai Lung and causing fear across the nation. So they go on a giant adventure, and Poe's two dads do get scared and worry for him and try and go on that journey as well. They go on that quest and uh, try to find him, uh, but unfortunately don't catch up in time until the Staff of Wisdom is given to the chameleon because it was stolen from Poe. She then opens up a, a portal to the spirit dimension, takes everyone's sort of, like, kung fu away, which I think is really strange, like, how they go about sort of stealing kung fu. It's a very weird sort of term, and it's a very weird sort of effect that happens. And... I don't know. It, w it was just weird to see. So, she sort of uses the fox as, like, her little minion, and the minion feels bad, you know? The fox feels bad for turning on Poe. So she goes to get Poe and her father, and, um... Not her father, but Poe's two, two fathers. And they're sort of in agreement. They go to the underground to help Poe raise an army to fight and get through to the lizard, to the chameleon. And they raise an army... They sort of fight all the iguanas in the battlefield and let Poe and the fox have like a 2v1 on the chameleon. They start losing, then they start winning, and then the chameleon sort of, um, you know, turns into a giant beast mixing all of these guys together. Kind of looks like a giant kaiju, kind of looks like Godzilla, not gonna lie, a big scary monster, very creepy, very, very freaky. And um, yeah, Poe then gets trapped and he's like, you know what? Fox, you give it a go. It's your turn, because, you know, you're a true hero. You can try and be the Dragon Warrior for once. She's reluctant to try, but she ends up trying anyway, and um, she uh, she successfully defeats defeats them. And uh, Tai Lung is, like, very respectful of Poe in this one, which I wasn't expecting, and he takes the chameleon into the spirit realm. All is happy, and he now decides to train her as the Dragon Warrior. So... That's pretty much where this movie ends off, with the Furious Five training her to become the Dragon Warrior. Basically like the number one, but with Poe this time. And, um, yeah, that, that's the movie. I'm gonna be honest, the animation style was a much higher quality, and did cause a little bit of disorientation with me, because it did look weird. It looked completely different to how I imagined it to look, and how I remember Kung Fu Panda looking, and I didn't really like that, I'm gonna be honest. The change in animation style did throw me off a lot, and, you know, it's just not what you want to, to see, 
like with the sort of newer movies, but they did try and do a lot of the sort of um, Poe and uh, Puss in Boots style animation that they did with Poe and the sort of background changing sort of 2D on 3D Spider-Verse influence on this movie. And it worked. It worked pretty well. The plot was pretty boring, and it did feel forced, and there isn't much else Poe can do. They did say they have six planned Kung Fu Panda movies, so there is still two that is yet to come out. And I'm going to be honest, that is too much Kung Fu Panda. I was happy with where they left it in the third one. They brought it back, and this one feels like a bit of a stretch, and I don't know what they could do after this. Poe has already reached the highest limits, so unless they kill him off in the next one, I don't know what else they could do with his character or with his story. He's already climbed the ranks way too quickly for any normal panda to do, and... It is just wild to me with like how much they've done with this character and how much and how well they treat him to be fair. However, we have to talk about other things and Aquafina is one of the main characters in this movie and I'm going to be honest, I quite like Aquafina in Shang-Chi. I don't like her in The Bad Guys. I don't like her in this movie. However, she is playing a fox, so I am very partial because foxes are my favorite animals. However, it's an arctic fox. It's a gray fox. It isn't it isn't my favorite orange boys. I'm going to be honest. I like my favorite orange boys. Um, so if she was orange, she would have probably got a little bit more favor favorable from me. But uh, still, still a no from me. Um, red buzzer. Beep, beep, boop, boop. Get that out of here. That's not what I want to see. And I'm very upset that the Furious Five wasn't here as well. They didn't come to the end, but I get it. They can't afford Seth Rogen to come back. He's busy with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Invincible, and a couple of other projects that he's on. He's just he's just a busy guy, and I get that. I, I completely understand. But still, not having Tigress in this one, we already had like a minimal like Poe. We had minimal, not Poe, minimal monkey. Uh, Crane and Mantis in the last one, and now we have none of them at all in this one. It just kind of feels lazy and sort of underwhelming because they are some of the fan favorite uh, characters, and we like that. We like the fan favorite characters, but they're just not here. So it kind of doesn't feel like a Kung Fu Panda movie without them. And, um,. Yeah, I don't have much else to say. The animation's definitely improved. The story's pretty weak. The characters, the new ones aren't as good as the old, and they're trying to replace the old ones, and I don't feel like that's a good way to go because the old characters are absolutely goated and some of the best characters to ever be written in this universe. So trying to replace them with a new fox, which, uh, again, a fox being a sly character, whoa, wouldn't expect that. Very stereotypical of foxes. But, um... Yeah, uh, Poe becoming the spiritual leader of uh, the, la the Valley of Peace. And having people not know who the Dragon Warrior is outside of this village seems very lazy as well, because they spent like three whole movies hyping this guy up, uh, only for him to be like a nobody, like a couple of villages away. And I feel like he goes on a lot of adventures. This story also feels very weak, with the bad guy having a very bad motive. We have Tai Lee... Tai Li, not Avatar, Tai Lung, uh, him being, obviously, he was promised the Dragon Warrior title, but it was then taken away from him by Uguay, so it had a very sort of Moro-esque vibe to it, and then we had sort of the, I forgot what he was, the ostrich type guy? He wanted to sort of end Dragon Warriors because of a prophecy, he wanted to end pandas, so we got his motive, and then we got Kai's motive as well, who was like banished to the spirit realm from... Ugwe, uh, one of his best friends, so he felt betrayed. So that's another one. But this one just couldn't do Kung Fu, and she wanted to. So instead of training, she stole people's powers. It feels lazy. She doesn't feel like a strong bad guy compared to the rest of them. And... I don't know, she just wasn't... She was underwhelming, and it felt like an episode from the show. It felt like an episode from the show was drawn out really long because Kung Fu Panda has had like four different shows on four different sort of streaming platforms and on f different forms of media so you know there's a lot of Kung Fu Panda media out there it just felt very weak for a movie I don't know it felt like a, a, a stereotypical episode of Kung Fu Panda it didn't feel good I don't know it didn't feel good enough to be a movie I feel but I still love Poe, I still love the world of Kung Fu Panda, and Jack Black is a good guy, so seeing him return here is quite good as well, and um, 
yeah, I'm going to give this movie a 6 out of 10. I'm happy that I watched it. I've obviously put a lot of time into Kung Fu Panda. It's something that I have grown up with, and it's continuing, so I'm going to continue to watch it. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. I'll see you all next one. I hope you all have an excellent day, and goodbye. Stay home and stay safe.